Hi, I'm Maria. I was born on the 9th of May, 1837, in Mornese, a small village in northern Italy. As a child, I was happy, full of fun, lively and a little vain. I'm blessed with a hard-working and loving family, and I'm always determined to do my best. Through my family and my parish priest, Don Pesterino, I came to know and love God with all my heart. At night, the stars would fill me with wonder. Look how many shining stars there are in the sky. How beautiful they are. My father tells me that God made the stars, just as he made all that there is. I love to sit and look at the stars and to think about God. When I was 12, we moved to a house in the hills to be close to the vineyards. It's too far to get to Mass in the village every day. So each evening, I would pray by my window. It's as if I'm there with them in the church. My family and friends ask what I'm doing. I point to the church and tell them, Look, Jesus is over there. One day, we came home to find our house robbed and all our valuables gone. My mum and dad were upset and shouted, People are so wicked. But I comforted them, telling them it was likely to be some unfortunate people who've lost everything in the war. I forgive the robbers and I encourage my parents to do the same. But we moved back to the village to be safe. When I was 23, my life changed. A typhoid epidemic struck our village. I had to help the sick, so I worked harder in the fields and brought food and water to those in hospital. I was really tired, but it was all worth it. But it made me weak and I got the fever. For days I tossed and turned, not knowing where I was. My parish priest brought me communion every day. Working in the fields had taught me patience, so the sickness didn't break me. And although I couldn't work like I used to, I could pray and figure out what I could do to serve God. Jesus is my whole strength. I didn't really have many skills apart from those I'd learned on the farm. I'd never been to school. And I was also recovering from my illness. I was walking over a hilltop one evening and I stopped. There was a building in the middle of the field below. Where did it come from? And those sisters playing with the village girls, who were they? I rubbed my eyes fiercely. Surely I wasn't having the same dreams I had during my fever. I breathed in, looked again, and saw only a bare field, hearing the words, I entrust them to you. I took this as a sign to serve God by serving others. And with my best friend Petronilla, I learnt dressmaking so that we could set up sewing classes for the girls in the village. We'd teach them a life skill and help them get on their feet. And we'd encourage them to live their Christian life joyfully by making every stitch an act of love for God. God can truly be found in the ordinary. More and more girls come to us. I often read them a book and teach them new songs while we are sewing. On Sunday afternoons, we dance, play and have catechism classes. We don't have much money and we keep receiving more and more girls. But I don't worry. God thinks of each of us and provides for our needs. One crisp autumn day, I hear that a famous priest from Turin is visiting the village, Don Bosco. He's done amazing work with young people, rescuing them from poverty and teaching them life skills. We meet and speak about our shared passion for the good of those who are young and poor. I'm very excited. A few young ladies and myself move into a small cottage 
so that we can better serve the poor girls of our village. I'm now 35 years old and something dramatic is happening in the village. The people have been working hard, raising funds to build a new college for the boys. But Don Bosco and our parish priest advise us to run the college. It will take in girls instead. The villagers protest, but we remain calm and steadfast. Later that year in the chapel of our school, 15 of us kneel before the altar. We promise to give our lives to God for the salvation of young people, like Don Bosco and his Salesians. We become the Salesian sisters. Despite sickness and poverty, life carries on in the same joyful way in the college. Everyone prays together, works, learns and has a fruitful time. It really is a house where God is loved. But I was so shocked when these sisters elected me to be their mother. Me. I have no qualifications or skills to bring. But I will trust God and act with mercy and kindness. I always remind my sisters that Our Lady is the true leader of our family. Today, the Salesian sisters continue the mission of St Mary Mazzarello worldwide, along with the Salesian priests and brothers of Don Bosco. They seek to promote the well-being of young people everywhere by bringing God's love to all. In this way, the spirit of St Mary Mazzarello walks today in the broad streets of European and American cities, in the jungle paths of the Amazon, on the sun-drenched deserts of Africa, in the mudflats of India and in the mountain recesses of the Andes. While she prays for us in heaven, her simple and humble spirit is alive in us. <laughs>